En question. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber will continue to hear the testimony of the witness Steve Heder, who will be questioned by the parties to this case. Le témoin Steve Heder, qui sera interrogé par les parties. The prosecution will conclude their session this morning, and then the lead lawyer for several parties will commence their session. Davan San, could you report the attendance of the parties and individuals to today's proceeding? Davan San, thank you, Mr. Le President, for Merci today's proceeding. All parties are present. Toutes les parties sont On the side, no tenuity is present in the holding cell downstairs pursuant to the decision of the trial chamber concerning his health. Mr. Stephen Heder, who will testify today, is already in the courtroom. President, thank you. Merci. We would like now to hand the floor to the prosecution to continue putting présent, questions to the witness to make proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. May it please you. And good morning to my fellow counsel. And good morning to you, Mr. Header. Bonjour à vous, Monsieur Header. Mr. President, can I please ask Monsieur le two things? J'ai deux choses à demander. Firstly, that the four files that Mr. Header was dealing with last Thursday now be handed back to him. And secondly, that he be handed a new file five. And I have here, Mr. President, a number of copies of the index to file five for distribution in the courtroom. President, Le Defense Counsel for Kyusampon, you may proceed. De oui, bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour à l'ensemble de la Good Chambre. Uh, bonjour également à l'ensemble de uh, mes confrères et partis. Um, Simplement, je ne sais pas encore ce qu'il y a dans le uh, document 5 uh, que M. le coprocureur uh, entend uh, faire parvenir aux témoins, mais s'il s'agit des documents, uh, des nouveaux documents qui ont été listés ce week-end uh, par M. le coprocureur uh, uh, concernant un certain nombre d'articles de presse, uh, tel qu'il a été envoyé par uh, mail, uh, je tiens dès maintenant à indiquer que nous avons des objections à ces documents parce qu'un certain nombre d'entre eux ne figurent pas au case file, ou en tout cas, Parmi nos recherches, nous ne les avons pas trouvées avant que ces documents puissent être fournis à Monsieur le témoin. Je souhaiterais que l'on puisse en discuter s'il s'agit encore une fois des documents qui ont été listés par Monsieur le coprocureur pendant ce week-end par email. Mr. President, I understand the observation entirely. They are not Je to do with the email documents. And I hope when my learned friend sees the index to file five, the documents will become apparent. They're not to do with the email. Elle verra que ces, que ces documents sont sans rapport avec le courriel. President, yes, le you président. may proceed. Court officer, could you deliver the hard copy for distribution to the parties in the court? Un exemplaire de ce document. Mr. President, there was also a collection of other papers of Mr. Heders from the files. Can I also hand those over? De Monsieur Heder qui viennent des classeurs, j'aimerais aussi les remettre.
Le Président, je vous en prie. Court officer, could you deliver Monsieur the Bios, four documents and the new one for the witness nouveau. examination? Thank you. Mr. Heder, you should ha now have five files in Monsieur front of you. Heder, en principe, vous avez My sous first les yeux questioning, though, is questions. going to relate to file Ma two. So could I ask you please to obtain file two? File two, tab four. Onglet file quatre. two, tab four. Classeur deux, onglet quatre. Document number E3 slash 573. Our description on our case of this document, Mr. Heder, is a transcription of the shorthand notes of an interview by Stephen Heder with Yang Sari on the 4th of January 1999. Now, first of all, can you confirm that you took shorthand notes of the interview with Yang Sari? Yes. I want to move to an extract about halfway down the page, which states, Q. Sampon became a central committee member 1976, although already in 1975 he was de facto involved in central committee affairs. As chairman of 870, Transfers and removals of cadre would cross his desk. He would be told, for example, that such and such was being sent to the Chamka, so in some ways he knew more than me. Close does that accurately record what Ying Sari told you about Q Sampan in this interview? Yes. Réponse, oui. Yes. I'm told that I may have misquoted the document number. Can I confirm for everyone it's E3 slash 573? Mr. Hedder, the Heder, extract that I've just quoted and you've confirmed includes confirmed the words that such and such was being sent to the Chamkar. What is or was the Chamkar back in the Chamkar days of Democratic Kampuchea? Um, well, Jamka is literally an agricultural field that's not for paddy, but for fruit or vegetables. So the, de culture the, de um, et non pas de application riz. on the face of it, the, 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 the meaning on the face of it, is being sent to farm ça veut dire those kinds of fields, non-paddy non agricultural And if you're able to, Question. Uh, Ying Sari was talking about Q Sampon's Ying Sari. crossing his desk, is the phrase, of Parle transfers and removals of cadre. Que sur le bureau de Can I concentrate on documents. the word removals? In all the interviews that you've conducted and from direct factual sources, without speculating and without offering an opinion, did the word removals have any particular connotation during the democratic Kampuchea period?
Um, réponse. Depending on context. Um, C'est selon le contexte. Well, put it this way. Um, Bien. The literal meaning is precisely le sens given littéral, c'est justement la traduction removal. que j'en ai faite, à savoir um, le retrait. The, the, exactly Qu'est-ce que ça voulait dire exactement was, un retrait think, quite intentionally, Je pense, that's an opinion, but quite intentionally à mon avis, by, by je pense que c'était délibérément laissé so ambigu par le terme utilisé. Thing, ça pouvait vouloir, vouloir dire une say, chose ou une autre. Ça pouvait vouloir dire tout simplement le retrait d'un poste ou bien le retrait du poste suivi par autre chose qui était sous-entendu dans l'emploi des termes. La, les termes employés ne donnaient pas la réponse à la question, mais quant aux implications Was the term removal ever used in the context of an arrest? Question: Is the term "de retrait" a parfois été utilisé pour désigner une arrestation? Yes. Réponse: um, One could be removed oui. by On pouvait être retiré par arrestation. Among many other possibilities. Parmi beaucoup d'autres possibilités. When Ing Sari told you. That Q Sampon had been chairman of 870. Was there any obvious doubt in the tone or the way he told you that Q Sampon was the chairman? Quant au ton employé par Yang Sari quand il vous a dit que Q Sampon avait été président. No. Réponse: Non. Aside from Question. talking about Q Sampon, having transfers en and removals of Sampon, cadre cross his desk as chairman of 870, did Ing Sari give any more detail as to the connection between Q Sampon, Office 870, and what he did a donné there? Plus de détails concernant le bureau 870 de Kyo Sampan et ce qu'il y faisait. Um, Réponse. Nothing more than is reflected here. Rien de plus que ce qu'on voit ici. Um, I'm going to be moving to separate Question. files now, Je Mr. Header. Can you put away our current file Veuillez and please pick up file 3? Et prendre le classeur numéro 3. Message from the interpreters. It would be helpful if the witness were a little closer to the microphone. Thank you very much. Mr. Hedda, file Question. three, Classe tab numéro nine. Numéro Document number E190.1.72, at the top, Steve Header interview haut, with Steve Van Rip, interview also Van known Rit, as Nguyen, alias Nguyen, 21st of March 2004, Saang, Kandal province. province de Saang, First Kandal. of all, Mr. Header, just a, a very brief introduction as to how this interview with Van Rip was organized. Très brièvement, comment a été organisée cette interview avec Van Rit um, Réponse. To use the journalistic phrase, journaliste, I simply appeared. I ascertained where he lived, lui. and I appeared at his residence and asked to speak to him. Je suis allé chez lui et j'ai demandé à lui parler. You should have within tab Question. nine. The transcribed à l'onglet numéro 9, uh, vous devriez avoir elements of the interview, and then behind that, can you confirm that you've got some handwritten notes? À part cela, y a-t-il aussi des notes manuscrites? I think seven pages in total. Je pense que ça fait au total sept pages. Can you confirm if they are the handwritten notes that you made when you were speaking to Van Rit? Alors que vous vous entreteniez avec Van Rit.
Yes. If we look on the typewritten version, Question. which is the first Prenons page in your page dans votre tab 9, it states as follows. Je vais lire. Van Rutt confirms Van Rutt that Q. Sampon was chairman of M870 after Doon. In that capacity, Van Rutt capacité, liaised with him Van Rutt on matters concerning commerce pour les and commerce requests for materials which would come from other central ministries through M870 to Van Rutt. Van Rutt he doesn't know what M870. other aspects of central committee work Q. Sampon might have handled, but do, does not deny that it could have included military and security affairs. De sécurité, can you confirm that that is what Van Rutt told you in this interview? Mais il n'exclut pas de sécurité. Confirmez-vous que c'est ce que vous a dit Van Rutt? Yes. Réponse. Oui. Dealing with the next Question. paragraph, it's recorded in the following paragraph terms. Suivant. When Q. Sampon told him Quand around July 1978 that the Central Committee wanted him to travel to the Northwest on commercial matters, dans la zone he feared he was about to be arrested. Il a eu peur Can you confirm that that is what Van Rutt told you in this interview? Que c'est ce que vous a dit Van Riet. Yes. Réponse. Oui. Turning to the next page. Page suivante, dit le procureur. Which takes us into English 00747760, French 00744418, and Kamaya 00742278. And in connection 7, 4, with 7, 6, 0, en français, 0, 0, 74, 44, 1978, et en français, et en Khmer, 0, 0, 74, 22, 78, je cite. He told Q. Sampon in November 1978 that the revolution in the countryside was a failure, that there was no great leap forward, but in fact, starvation. Close quote. Again, can you confirm that that is what was said in this interview with Van Rit? Yes. Next question. Without speculating, without giving opinion, relying on factual sources, whether from your interviews or otherwise, have you seen factual material about Van Rit liaising with Q. Sampan on commercial matters? Yes. Possibly in some of the DC CAM interview material, something like that or to that effect Quelque comes chose up. Comme cela. Um, <coughs> I'm trying to remember whether there might be something similar in any of the interviews that were done in 2005. Dans les entretiens de 2005. Um, I don't, I don't specifically recall that Je there was. There might have been, but I don't specifically recall that there was. Que cela ait été le cas. And have you ever seen pas. any copy Question, Ministry of Commerce documentation either mentioning Q. Sampon, M, or if you like, it being apparent from the face of the document that it's a Ministry of Commerce document mentioning M or Q. Sampon? Uh, yes, I Réponse. saw at least some such oui. documents vu au moins um, documents when they were still on file Alors at DC CAM, dans les archives du DC -CAM. Um, and more such documents Et un plus grand uh, when I was working at, type, I believe, OCIJ, not OCP, but I could have been both places. Au BCGI, ou au bureau des Thank you. I'd like you to move next, please, to file Question. four. Classeur 4.
file for tab 4. Onglet 4. These are extracts from the book Seven Candidates for Prosecution. I'd like you to go to the extract that reflects page 93, which is, I think, the last page in this pack. Do you have that page? It should have 93 in the top right. Yes, confirm you quote from this page, Je cite. in particular, uh, and I should say this is referencing Q. Sampon, in particular, it was in his capacity as chairman of Office 870 that Q. Sampon was present as a note taker at a secret meeting in the first half of 1978 at which Pol Pot, Nguyen Thier and Son Sen ordered the purge and execution of East Secretary Sao Pim and most other leading CPK military and political cadre in the East Zone. Footnote 361 then references two documents, E3-1915, which is Nate Thayer, Death in Detail, in the Far Eastern Economic Review, and E3-1567, Nate Thayer, Dutch Confesses, again, Far Eastern Economic Review. Le President. President. Prosecutor, could you please uh, refer to your footnote and EN numbers again? Thank you. Certainly, Mr. President. The footnote in seven candidates oui. is footnote 361. And the documents to support the footnote are E3 slash 1915. And E3 slash 1567. Question, Mr. Header. Nate Thayer. Nate Thayer. Little bit of detail. And can you help us on when it was that Nate Thayer was speaking to Deutsch or Deutsch? A little bit of detail, not too much. Please. entrer trop dans les détails. Um, Nate Thayer was, is a journalist, um, had worked in Bangkok and Phnom Penh, and Phnom Penh. Um, and particularly in Phnom Penh, en particulier from, à Phnom Penh, sometime I think shortly after the beginning of the UNTAC period, Un peu après through, le début de la période de la Produc, end of the 90s, et jusqu'à la fin des années 90 um, au moins, and was, I believe, the interview with Doik or the conversations with Doik, la conversation avec Doik or the conversations at which Nate was present la were all in, was it, it was early 99, if Nate. I recall correctly, uh, sometimes 19. in the presence of one or more persons from the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights of the era, uh, I think sometimes on his own. Au commissariat aux droits de l'homme, À et Thank il you. Était seul. Still within file four, tab four, so the very question that you have. Four, but four. if you move backwards, please, to page 65. Page 65. So this is document E3 slash 48, seven candidates for prosecution. Candidates for prosecution. Page 65, page footnote 234. Note 234. It's stated, Mr. Header, and this is reference to reports. Ceci concerne 
These reports are sometimes addressed specifically to Pol Pot, including by abbreviation or by his alias 009. But more often, they are addressed simply to brother or the organization or the central committee by its code number 870. But they were routinely Mais stated to be copied to a list of recipients that included Nguyen Chia. More particularly, these reports were routinely marked for copying and presentation to some or all of the five members of the standing committee who were usually resident in the capital, Phnom Penh. Pol Pot, referred to as Uncle, Nguyen Chia, referred to as Uncle Nguyen, Ing Sari, referred to as Brother Van, the late Von Vet, referred to as Brother Von, and the late Son Sen, referred to as Brother Kiev. And in footnote 234, you state, the list usually appears at the bottom of the document, and like the documents themselves, is usually typewritten. Starting in early 1978, Brother Kiev is often not on the list, apparently because he was on duty on the Vietnamese border. In addition to the specified members of the standing committee, the list also typically indicates that the documents were to be copied to the office and to documentation. Close quote. Now, Mr. Hedder, the question is just approximately how many reports of this nature have you seen? Just roughly. Um, if by reports we're referring si in this context specifically to reports that were in fact telegrams, qui des um, a dozen or two? Peut-être euh, environ 25. I'd like you please now to turn to Question. file 5. Classeur 5. Mr. Header, file five probably indexes one and two together, or you may be Index answering questions selectively on them. But so that we have the two documents on the record, first of all, E3 slash 724, a revolutionary youth from July 1975, and secondly, E3 slash 731, a revolutionary flag special issue, December 1975 to January 1976. Mr. Hedder, in respect of revolutionary flags, the case file shows that contact was going to be made with you to provide two copies of revolutionary flag. First question is, did you provide copies of revolutionary flag having received requests from this court? de remettre deux exemplaires de cette revue. Est-ce que vous l'avez fait suite à une demande du tribunal 
réponse. Yes, at least. Oui. Revolutionary flag or flags and or revolutionary youth. I don't recall specifically. La jeunesse révolutionnaire ou l'étendard révolutionnaire. Now, if we take them together and call them revolu well, revolutionary flags and youth. Appelons-les. Can I ask when was the first time that you saw? And can you explain whether it was an original or a copy? But roughly what year was the first time you saw an original or a copy of revolutionary flag or revolutionary youth? Um, I don't recall. Certainly 1980, maybe 1979. Certainement en 1980, peut-être dès 1979. La première fois que j'ai vu un recueil de ces deux magazines. Si mes souvenirs sont bons, ce n'était pas avant fin 1980. Almost entirely certain that the ones that were asked for by the court and which I provided to the court came from that collection that I saw in late 1980, and they were among duplicates of those particular issues of flags and de ces numéros, uh, de ces deux revues. Um, ces documents étaient éparpillés museum, au musée du génocide de Tool Slang, anciennement S21. Ces documents m'ont été remis par l'archiviste de ce musée. When you say duplicates, and if you can look, please, at tab one and tab two on the documents I've described. Dealing first of all with tab one, which was E3 slash 724, we can see that the version we have here on the front cover is in red, with two flags shown on the front in red. Can you please confirm that? Yes, and I'll, oui. I'll clarify that when I say duplicates, I mean duplicates of the original. In those days, there were um, there was no almost there was not, um, almost no photocopy capacity in Phnom Penh. So the archivist's decision was they would give me copies of things Donc, of which uh, of, they would give me originals les of les publications of which there were also de publications dont il y avait également d'autres originaux. So I only originaux. got originals. Donc, I didn't je n'ai reçu que des originaux et jamais de photocopies. Je n'ai reçu que des originaux dont eux possédaient également d'autres versions. Question. If I can call it the physical state of each of the pages on this first document and indeed the second one and the state of the magazine as shown by the spine, these are the ones that you saw back then. Vous pouvez dire que ce sont les documents que vous avez vus à l'époque Oui, je pense qu'il y en avait d'autres, mais ils ont été placés au dossier par d'autres canaux. Maître Copé, merci. Bonjour. Mesdames et les juges, chers confrères, ai-je bien compris Est-ce qu'on montre à présent aux témoins une version, une copie couleur de l'étendard révolutionnaire Si oui, surtout pour notre client, il serait bon de pouvoir voir la même copie couleur de ce numéro de l'étendard révolutionnaire. Je prie donc l'accusation de nous remettre une telle copie en couleur. Yes, that certainly presents no problems. Can I explain? Pas de problème. Uh, on the case file, E3 slash 724 is in red, Au but we're going dossier, to have copies of both of these rouge, copied off avoir... and passed over to my learned friend. Des...
copie Mr. de ce Heather, document can et le passer à notre conférence. First at the first tab, Prenons which is E3/724. And if I take you to Dans the E3/724. The first page in after the cover, if that Première makes page sense. Après la page de gare. And we can see in the top of the page de la there's page, some handwriting in English. Il y a des notes manuscrites en anglais. It's down the margin of that page and also dans la marge, at the top. Can I check that you're at tab one, which is the revolutionary un, flag with two flags on the front? C'est le numéro sur lequel on trouve deux drapeaux en couverture. Or let me give you the opportunity to, to go through this Je vais vous laisser um, document. So this is the one with two document. revolutionary flags on the front. C'est celui dont la couverture porte well, deux the revolutionary youth from July 1975. But there's writing in English at various points in the document. Dans plusieurs parties du document, il y a des annotations Can en you help on whose annotations or markings those are? In other words, whose handwriting? Qui a apposé ces notes? À qui appartient cette écriture. Il s'agit donc du numéro de juillet 75 de la jeunesse révolutionnaire. Réponse. Je reviens à la couverture. Il y a une annotation en haut à droite qui dit 775. C'est moi qui ai essayé d'établir une chronologie concernant cette source. Underlining in red Ce qui est souligné en rouge with the flash translations in red, all of that avec is me. les traductions en rouge, tout ça c'est moi. Peut-être que je suis tombé à court d'encre rouge. Les annotations qu'on trouve plus bas dans le document. Pour ce qui est des parties soulignées. The squiggle Ce qui along est the margin souligné, and the English les annotations, les annotations dans la marge, et tout ce qui est en anglais, tout ça, c'est de moi. And the same question in respect question. of tab two. Même question concernant so this is the revolutionary anglais. flag. And again, Étendard if you look on the front page, there's some markings in red pen. And then as we go through the document again, there's some markings both on the pages themselves and in the margins. Yes, again, Réponse. the date... Une fois de plus, la date qui a été ajoutée en couverture, ainsi que le gribouillis et les parties soulignées, ainsi que les annotations en marge et dans le corps du texte, tout cela, c'est de moi. Thank you. Can I just explain to everyone in court that une explication. The first document that I've been E3/724, the red color we understand is Ici, E169 slash 4.1.1 and the second document I've re been referring to E169 slash 7.3.1 ensuite the E3 red bar version is E169 slash 4 slash 1.1.1 and the second Thank you, Mr. Hedder. I'd like you now to turn to tab three within the same file. So this is file Anglais five, tab three. Du classeur cinq. Le président, Mr. Victor Coppe, you may Victor proceed. Um, briefly, Mr. President, just to come back to Brièvement, my early point today. Je reviens um, à ce que je disais. It's very difficult for me to, to catch up Il m'est très difficile de suivre l'interrogatoire si je n'ai pas um, les documents affichés à l'écran. Uh, C'est surtout difficile pour mon client so de suivre. Uh, down from the holding cell is able to Il see faut que Nuanchia, depuis sa cellule temporaire, puisse voir 
une version uh, en couleur d'étendard révolutionnaire. Of, um, Vous savez que c'est so, une question litigieuse. No Nous examinons rapidement honest, ce document notes, et franchement, um, j'ignore complètement de quelle note so, l'accusation vient de parler. Je prie l'accusation de ralentir le rythme opportunity i would suggest to be able to have everybody in the, in the courtroom see what colored version of the revolutionary flag we're speaking tous about ici, nous sachons de quelle version en couleur nous parlons uh, were in fact shown to the witness et que nous sachons également à qui appartiennent Mr. les notes qui agree with that témoin. suggestion can we please have up on the screen the first of the documents i've been referring to d'abord faire afficher le premier de ces documents e3 9/ Interprète se reprend E169 bar 4 bar 1.1.1. I understand that's on the screen. Mr. Header, to take this simply referencing an earlier question and answer, you said that you had written 7 stroke 7.5. On the front page. Avoir Is that correct? 7 bar 75 en page de garde, c'est exact. Yes. Réponse, oui. And if I can please ask for the very Question. next page to come up on the screen. J'aimerais faire apparaître à l'écran la page suivante. There we have some Ici, English words written on the Khmer text. Écrit en anglais. In the margin dans le texte en Khmer, and at the top of the page, page, and we had some underlining as Il well, and your answer was that this was in your handwriting. Is that correct? correct? Yes. Réponse. Oui. Can I ask, please, at this page, so this is the first page Question. after page. the front page, is put up on the Après screen garde, so that everyone can see this page. Pour que chacun puisse la voir sous les yeux. It's not, it's not been shown on the Maître screen. Coppe, cela n'apparaît pas à l'écran. Yeah. Mr. President, can the AV unit be instructed to put up on the screen ERN page 0, 0, 0 8 Zero, Mr. President, I understand this is being sorted out with the AV unit. Can I give the ERN number again to help? This is a Khmer page and it is at ERN number 0 0 8 0 the president, every booth is instructed to display uh, this relevant page uh, on the screen as per the request by the prosecutor. Mr. President, that is now up on the screen. Mr. Heder, is it on your screen? And again, just to confirm, there is some writing on the top of the page and in the margin in red pen and some underlining on the document itself. Can you confirm that that was in your handwriting? Yes. I want to move to the second document, which is behind your tab 2. This is document number E169. 
169, barre 4, stroke 1, barre 1, point 1, point 1, point 2, point 2. And I'd like the first page to be shown. The Khmer ERN is That is now up on the screen, on the screen rather. Mr. Header, on this document in the top, there is written in pen 12 stroke 75 dash 1 stroke 76. Is that in your handwriting? Yes. The next page I'd like the AV unit to bring up is Khmer ERN 0098098229. We now have that page, and again, there is some writing on the body of the document, some writing in the margin of the document and some underlining on the document itself. Can you confirm if that is in your handwriting? Uh, yes, again. And, Mr. Hedder, where are the hard copy originals of these documents? Can you help? Um, my recollection is that I gave them to the court. Je les ai remis au tribunal. Yep, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Now I'd like to go next, please, to tab three. Passons à l'onglet trois. The document at tab three is document. E3 slash 25. E3 bar 25. It is a revolutionary flag special issue, December 1976 to January 1977. I would like this to be shown in Khmer, please, so can I give the Khmer ERN first? Khmer, 000, English en anglais. zero zero four nine zero zero one four two four French zero zero five zero four zero zero four nine zero It's an extract, Mr. Header. Can you confirm you have it? with a page with a heading of attacking the enemy politically. And this is on page 31 in the English, and I've given the Khmer reference. Can the AV unit show, please, the page in Khmer 
Mr. Hedder, can you confirm for me at least that you've got the Monsieur English Hedder, of this page with a heading attacking the enemy politically? I've deliberately yes. given you a full version of the Khmer because I know often there some words can need elaborating, Car but I'm going to read the whole of this section. Je vais lire de cette Attacking the enemy politically, enemy taking just one example, un fighting exemple, to seize the people. Throughout the world, they Dans never fought entier, to seize the people. Our line was to fight to seize the people. One, we took him. Two, we took them. One hundred, we took them. One thousand, we took them. And so on, until we fought for and seized the people from Phnom Penh too. The line of drying up the people from the enemy was very correct. This never happened in the world. When the enemy has the people, the enemy has a military and an economy. When the enemy has no people, the enemy has no military and no economic strength. Our reasoning is correct, thus our line is very correct. We fight to seize the people at every location. An example, the fighting in Banam in 1973. We took everyone in Banam town, expelling the ethnic Vietnamese, the ethnic Chinese, the military, the police. We took everyone, drying up the people from the enemy. And at the end of the next, uh, sorry, halfway through the next paragraph, talks about the phrase, because we pulled out the people. When all the people were pulled out, they gained no additional forces. And at the last sentence of that paragraph, the decisive factor in the victory, we pulled out the people. An example, we liberated Udong in 1974. We pulled out all the people. And at the bottom of the extract, this is a very important strategic line control the people and seize the people, close quote. Mr. Hedder, um, first of all, you've already testified about the phrase drying up the people from the enemy, but here we have the, set, the phrases seizing the people and pulling out the people. Based on factual information, your interviews or other direct factual sources without speculating and without offering opinion. Is there other factual documentation talking of or interviews referencing the phrases seizing the people or pulling out the people? Uh, yes. There is reference in this document to fighting in Banam town. I don't know where this is. You said you arrived in September 1973, again based on factual sources, without offering an opinion and without speculating. Uh, is there factual information about um, drying up the people in Banam in 1973 from sources other than the document we are now looking at? Um, not that I am immediately aware of, no. Not in my files, in other words, not in my personal. Pas dans mes dossiers personnels. In terms of my earlier question about factual information on the phrase seizing or pulling out the people, your answer was yes. Can you tell us in what sort of documents there is factual information about seizing the people or pulling out the people? 
Um, may I deal with the translation issue in this context? Ici yes. Une de um, le the pulling out one is straightforward. Pour ce That's qui est de the same retirer, Khmer term as le même removal terme that we encountered in another retirer. context. So Donc this on a parlé is an example context. of removal that Voici doesn't necessarily mean arrest. Ne veut pas um, dire une the term that's translated here is seizing. I was sitting here thinking, saisir. I've been trying to figure out a way to translate this word for 40 years and still don't have the answer. Ce terme. Je pas uh, de I can only give you an example that gives you the sense. Un pour um, this is the, the verb that's used to describe, employé, for example, exemple, two children fighting over a piece of candy. Deux qui se and the one who bonbon. gets the piece of candy celui is the one who seizes, to use this phrase, bonbon, the candy. Qui a or alternatively, as in this context, two armies or two context, political administrations fighting for administrative control over people or of people, a more neutral formulation. Uh, or it could also be used to refer to territory. Um, and to anticipate where it goes down Donc, to the very last line la and the bits that are boxed in the red in the English, uh, that's the same seize the people I'm talking about the sentence. This is a very important strategic line. Control the people and seize the people. So that's the same seize. I have a bit of a problem with the translation of the uh, 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 the translation of the term that's in Khmer into the English word control. Um, this control. is a word that literally means, the, the literal meaning of this word is grasp. Um, it has a variety of meanings depending on context. It can mean literally grasp, that is have in hand. It was also used to mean to grasp in the intellectual sense, to have a grasp on some idea, some notion, um, some line, some party line. So I, I think control is a bit of an interpretation of the literal meaning. So it's a possible interpretation. But not a necessary possible, interpretation. Necessary. Um, as for where else these phrases have appeared, uh, they were frequently used in the radio broadcasts of the time. Um, I, 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 I'm quite certain they must appear in other party documents of the, of the time, uh, either 75, 79, or prior to 75. Um, and they also constantly came up when I was talking to people before April 1975 and since. So these are very common terms, commonly used, commonly appearing. Thank you. I'd like Merci. next to go to tab four behind the same file. This is document number E3 slash 1108. It is a report, and I'm going to read the heading of the report. Report. Subject. The meeting to celebrate the enemy's 23rd anniversary meeting and Hu Yun's speech. On the 30th of September 1974, a commission of the Communist Party of Kampuchea's Central Committee gathered to celebrate the anniversary of the 23-year-old history of resistance in Amlien district. The event was held with the participation of many people in the Khmer Rouge's framework, party members, and Khmer People's National Liberation Armed Forces from different places who all dressed in black. Again, from factual sources, not speculating or giving an opinion, relying on interviews or other factual sources, can you help please on what the anniversary of the 23-year-old history of resistance in Amlien district refers to? One. 
Um, it would appear to be a, an allusion to the um, fabricated date given for the given by the Communist Party of Campuchia for its foundation at this time, at the time this meeting was held. This was the date that was used by the Communist Party of Campuchia at the time uh, to, um, that it, the date on which it claimed the, that its party was formed. So 1974, less 23, takes us to which year for the formation? I don't want to lead you. Yes, it took me an embarrassing long time to do those maths. 51. Thank you. I'd like you to please to turn to page 6 on your document. This is English ERN 005-83824. The Khmer ERN is 0038375. And the French is zero zero seven eight eight three five six. And there's this quote. Later on, and I should say this is referencing Hu Yuan's speech. So page six of your document at the bottom. Later on, the organization implemented a plan according to the slogan of the first phase, attack the countryside, surround the city, which was the second phase. The implementation of the plan achieved considerable success, hence in 1971, the organization decided to oblige all of its military cadres to leave Vietnam's military units by shifting to self-reliance. My question, Mr. Heder, is, based on factual information with the usual caveat, is there other factual reference to a plan which has two phases, phase one, attack the countryside, and phase two, surround the city? Um, this, this kind of formulation is classic in Chinese communist thought and Vietnamese communist thought. That said, immediately off the top of my head, I don't recall a specific reference in CPK materials to this, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was All right, thank you. Tab 5, please. We're moving now to document number E3-118. The English ERN is 00166994. The French is 00845853. And the Khmer is 00846160-61. And this is a FIBIS document for April 1975. The extract relates to the heading. Q Sampong, 21st April Victory Message on Phnom Penh Radio, the Phnom Penh Domestic Service in Cambodia on the 21st of April. And it's a congratulatory statement by the RGNUC Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of National Defence and CPNLAF Commander-in-Chief Q Sampong to CPNLAF units and Cambodian people live or recorded. The third paragraph quoting the speech is in the following terms, and I quote, 
This is our nation's and people's greatest historic victory. Our entire nation, people, and CPNLAF as well as people throughout the world and in all friendly countries far and near, warmly welcome this great victory. It has opened the most brilliant and righteous path which led the Cambodian people and the CPNLAF in waging the powerful people's war to fight the enemy on every field, military, political, economic, and in its efforts to drain the population from controlled areas successively smashing all enemy maneuvers, relentlessly attacking and draining the enemy of its military, political, economic and financial strength, food and rice, until it reached a point from which it could not recover. Finally, the enemy died in agony. Mr. Head of the first question, we know that you left Phnom Penh before this date of the 21st of April 1975, but did you hear this broadcast around about this time, or when is the first time that you saw factual documentation referencing this broadcast by Q. Sampan? Reflétant cette allocution de Q. Sampan. This broadcast wouldn't have been easily audible to me where I was on the 21st of April 1975, um, but the same process of distribution of Phibis materials that I described previously um, is also applicable to the U.S. Embassy in Bangkok. They received, as a matter of course, all the same blue teletype um, translations by Phibis of such broadcasts. And I did, having done that, having done, having followed the, those blue teletypes in Phnom Penh, I also followed them in Bangkok. So I, 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 I think it's highly likely I saw this in the blue teletype version in Bangkok in April 1975. I was going to cover this later, but I think it's convenient to cover it now. The archive rat in Phnom Penh continues to be the archive rat in Bangkok. Is that correct? Le rat de bibliothèque de Phnom Penh et le rat de bibliothèque de Bangkok restent le même animal, n'est-ce pas? Explain to us, not a live story. Can you explain to us? where you went, I think you said you left Phnom Penh on the 11th of April, is that correct, or was it another day? Yes. Can you take us from the 11th of April 1975, let's say to the end of 1975, where were you and what sort of interest did you continue to have in what was going on in democratic Cambodia and how did you access sources of information during that period? Um, I flew out on the 11th of April 1975 in the morning um, with a plan to return to Phnom Penh, a plan which turned out not to be possible to implement. Um, so I was, as it were, stranded in Bangkok. Um, went from Bangkok to the Thai-Cambodian border, probably arrived on the Thai-Cambodian border on or about the 17th, because by the 15th of April it was clear that um, it wasn't going to be possible to fly back into Phnom Penh. Um, did some interviewing of people coming out to the Thai side, Du pays qui passait vers le Until Thai, sometime in May, if I recall correctly, at which point I went to May. Laos Et vers and cette did je suis allé recording Laos. from Laos for a couple of months. À de um, Laos and then près from de Laos, Laos I du went Laos, to Taiwan. Taiwan towards the middle of the year, latter half of 
of, of, of 1975. It's been a couple of months reporting from Taiwan. And also doing some Chinese study. And from there, I went um, back to Cornell, where I'd done my BA, uh, to pursue a higher level degree in what Cornell called government, which is a kind of political science course. That would have been, I would have arrived in Ithaca and in Cornell in September 75. Vers septembre 75. If I call that the back to Canal period now, September 75 onwards, Donc, à partir you're de at Cornell. Septembre 75. Vous Can êtes you à Cornell. just explain and nous dire move us into 76 or 77 or et whatever et years we're in? But 76, how are you 77? accessing information about democratic Là, Cambodia? Um, academic articles, newspaper reporting, radio. Can you give us some flavour as to how you continue your contact at Cornell with issues à Cornell, Cambodia? Votre, votre connexion, si vous voulez, avec les affaires cambodgiennes. Um, I mean, the, the, the preface to that. The answer Alors, to that question is with great difficulty. Euh, commencer, um, it was de façon générale, possible to access the possible yellow daily report version of FBIS, which was deposited in the Cornell qui, Library. Uh, était à la the Cornell, Cornell Library in those days also ran a very comprehensive newspaper clipping service, un service focused de on Asia. Complet. Southeast Asia in particular, a special part of the library that did only that. So I was able to follow the media reports. Um, I had some contact with journalist friends who were reporting on Cambodia out of Thailand, the American Embassy in Thailand. I also had some contact with former or current U.S. government officials. Uh, either in Thailand or in Washington, who um, were involved in Cambodia affairs, so there was some information coming from them. And then um, I talked at length to the delegation of American Communist Party Marxist-Leninist uh, journalists who went to Cambodia in, I believe, the middle of 78. Um, I was in contact with Elizabeth Becker and Richard Dud Dudman, who went to Cambodia at the end of 78. And also in late 78, I had my first direct contact with Democratic Kampuchea officials, des um, including Yang Sari, um, who came to the United States, came to, to New York City to attend a, a UN General Assembly meeting, I think it was. Uh, he was accompanied by a number of people from his ministry, including Imlon alias Not, with whom I joked about the fact that he had shelled my home in 1974. Um, and part of the purpose of those uh, meetings or encounters or discussions was to arrange for me and a number of others, um, journalists, scholars, to go to Democratic Kampuchea, uh, and the, that trip was scheduled to occur in early 1979. Um, however, um, the delegation um, got to Beijing at a point after which the large-scale Vietnamese invasion had already been launched. We discussed the situation with the then Democratic Kampuchea ambassador in Beijing, about whom I spoke to you previously, Pichieng alias To, um, and he explained to us that the Vietnamese were attempting to take Phnom Penh, um, and that we would have to wait a little while uh, until Democratic Kampuchea threw the Vietnamese out of Cambodia. Um, that little while turned out to be um, basically uh, never happened in some ways. Um, they didn't throw them out. So from there, 
From Beijing, I went to donc, Bangkok, Beijing, from Bangkok back Bangkok, to the Thai-Cambodian border, uh, and we've Bangkok already briefly discussed my uh, rather foolish little trips into democratic Cambodia at the very tail end, and just after the tail end of the regime in January 1979. In that answer, you mentioned Dans in lawn, alias Nat. Vous avez parlé Who de was he? What was his job? What happened to him? Quelle était ses fonctions? Qu'est-ce qui lui est arrivé? Quel a été son sort? Um, he was a leading cadre of one of il the divisions that operated out of the special zone. That was the capacity in which he or his forces shelled the southwest part of Phnom Penh in 74. Uh, he then came to Phnom Penh and was the original chairman of S21. Uh, after that, he took up another post in the general staff under Sun Sen. And then in the latter part of 1978, he was transferred along with a number of other general staff, high-ranking cadre, to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and like most, if not all of them, um, was purged sent to S21 at the very end of 78 or very beginning of 79. I'd like you to look at file five. I'd like you to go, though, to the index to file five that is at the front. And you'll see there at items 6 through to 11, there is reference to a number of Nouvelles du Cambodge magazines or publications. And I wonder, first of all, please, if I could take you to um, number 6, so tab 6. This is document number E3-1238. And Mr. Hedder, can you confirm that you've got this in English and French? In terms of the French version, we have the, the title Nouvelle du Cambodge. We're obviously back in this document E3-1238 to late March in 1974, going into April. And on the front page in the English, please, can I take you to? This is English RN 00278739. And it's a message delivered on the 27th of March from Norodom Sihanouk uh, of congratulations to Q Sampan on the official friendly visit to Vietnam, and the text simply reads, I am extremely happy to learn that you have arrived in good health in the glorious and fraternal Democratic Republic of Vietnam, and to deliver to you and their excellencies Ying Siri, Q Tirit, and my heartfelt wishes for a complete success in your patriotic mission, your current and future visits to our friends, Vietnam, China, and Korea. Now, Mr. Hedder, I want to ask you about at the time now. So this is back at the time in late March, early April. Can you remember whether from Nouvelle du Cambodge or other sources, this delegation led by Q Sampong and Ying Siri going on an official visit to a number of countries. Uh, yes, from the blue teletype FIBIS file in the U.S. Embassy in Phnom Penh. I'm not going to go through every document because we don't have time, but can I take you please to index, sorry, to tab 9, so the same folder but tab 9. Tab 9 references in uh, document number E3-114.
The page I'd like to go to is la your page, page 7 in page English. De la that then gives English ERN 00280556, French 00000093394, and Khmer. Zero zero six six two two five eight. There is an extract which reads as follows. It's under a heading. The Phnom Penh traitors are in total disarray and are cornered on the defensive on all fronts. There's an extract, and I quote. But when they Mais were exposed in Phnom Penh, FAPLNK launched on an assault on the 14th of March against positions on the Kotak Islands and Ochnatay on the Mekong River, six kilometers from the Royal Palace, Phnom Penh. In one day and one night, they liberated the islands, wiped out an enemy battalion, and helped 50,000 people to cross over to the liberated zone. Close quote. Mr. Hedder, my question Monsieur is, at Heder, the time, back around the 14th of March, 1974, can you remember um, incidents at Kodak Islands and Ochnate on the Mekong River, whether from this source or other factual sources? No. I don't remember this particular incident. On the same page, we continue. A day later, on March the 15th, FAPLNK again launched a swift and surprise attack on the city of Udon. On the 18th of March, it says 1874, Udon was totally liberated. An enemy division was totally wiped out, and 30,000 inhabitants of that town and surrounding areas successfully crossed over to the liberated zone. It is only after FAPLNK had totally destroyed the military positions, the administrative power, detention camps, the pacification centers at Udon, that the traitors rushed reinforcement troops to recapture the town of Udon, but they too were totally trounced and decimated in great numbers. The first question relates to what size if you, if you knew at the time of Khmer Republic troops were present in Udon prior to the Khmer Rouge attack, this suggests a, uh, an enemy division was wiped out. Was that in accordance with direct factual information you had at the time or that you um, read shortly afterwards? Um, I, I can't say that I knew the, the thank that is Khmer Republic order of battle uh, for that particular location. Um, I can say that when comparing these radio broadcasts or these transmissions, some of these are teletype transmissions, not radio broadcasts. Um, with what I, either I saw on, on the ground or I was told by others who were on the ground, military attaches and the like, the numbers that were in, in some of the events that are described in these um, radio broadcasts or teletype transmissions either never occurred or include highly inflated numbers. The 
latter part of the quote referred to detention camps. Now, you probably don't remember, but on day one when we were going through Cambodian communism, there was a footnote, I think 83, that referred to a US um, CIA report about a detention camp near Siem Reap. Now, can you help us again, based on factual information, without speculating and without giving opinion evidence, can you say from factual sources what the prevalence was, if any, of detention camps prior to 1975? Well, the, the Khmer Republic continued to Republic operate Khmer prisons and uh, police lockups in Phnom Penh and other provincial towns. There were also occasionally um, ad hoc military detention facilities um, in places outside of Phnom Penh and, and provincial towns. Uh, but I think my recollection is the latter were relatively rare. Ces dispositifs étaient, me semble-t-il, passablement rares. Thank you. Tab 10, please, Merci. within the same file. Merci. Dans le même dossier. The President. Mr. Prosecutor, the time is now appropriate for adjournment. Il est temps at the chamber, de procéder à une pause. Now and resume at Nous 11. reprendrons and à 11 heures. Et le procureur de la Cour procure que la question qui est posée par le procureur est relevante. Uh, therefore, the chamber uh, grants the request of the prosecutor. The prosecutor will have the whole uh, morning, uh, this morning, to put the question to the witness. And as for the lead co-lawyer for the civil party, uh, the chamber will also grant one hour and 30 minutes uh, to put the question to the witness. Court officer is instructed to assist the witness uh, during the break and have him return to this courtroom at 11, 5 to 11.